Yeah, I'm Brian Cox. I am a professor of particle physics at the University of Manchester and also probably most known for making programs on the BBC and elsewhere on um, astronomy, which was my first first love. And actually, I did a degree in physics with astrophysics at the University of Manchester. Quantum mechanics seems to be, as far as we can tell, a fundamental property, a fundamental framework that the universe sort of exists within the laws of quantum mechanics, the, the universe and everything in it, including you, obey. Um, why is that? We don't know. And, and I think it's really important in, in physics and all of science to know that you can't derive everything. You can't figure out everything. There are some things things like the speed of light or the strength of gravity or quantum mechanics, the framework, that, that we, they're just a given as far as we can tell. They're just the way the universe is. That's not to say that at some point in the future, someone will figure out some deeper theory or, or, or understand those things. But at the moment, honestly, and I think it's very important to say, there are just some things that that's the way that nature is. Do I think we're alone in the universe? Uh, the answer is we don't know. Um, I doubt we're alone in the universe. Even the, the observable universe has something like two trillion galaxies in it. And each galaxy has hundreds of billions of stars, trillions of planets in each galaxy. So, I, you know, if I was to guess, I'd say we're not alone in the observable universe. I'm very excited about the two missions to Europa, um, Europa Clipper and JUICE, because Europa is another potential home for life. James Webb Space Telescope, the JWST, is finding out remarkable things. Our, our whole model of, not a whole model, but we've had a model of the way the universe evolved from the earliest times. And it's been very well tested and very consistent for decades now. But actually, the new data from uh, the, the new telescopes we have up there, like the JWST, uh, is beginning to suggest that there's something we don't understand in the way the universe has evolved from the earliest times. It uh, might be that there's something wrong with our measurements. It's a good lesson if you're all listening and you're in your science lab. One of the, the most of being a scientist is to make sure that you understand your data and understand what you've measured and understand what little mistakes that could be in there or things you didn't expect that, or, or, or are you looking at something genuinely that's not understood, a new discovery? And so we're in that place now with, with these missions, the, the big telescopes and future telescopes, where we're just perhaps saying there's something really interesting that we don't understand about the way the universe works. <laughs> Star Wars or Star Trek? You know, I think... I honestly, if I, if I had to be in a world, it would be Star Trek world. Because if you think about it, Star Wars world is, is I, I love Star Wars, but I grew up, it was one of the first films that in, in the 1970s, I'm old enough to have gone there and I loved it. And I, I wanted to be Han Solo, right? And then, but if you say, do you want to be on the Millennium Falcon rattling along and did or the Starship Enterprise, especially the, the, the next generation Starship Enterprise, I think the Enterprise would be a nicer place to live. <laughs> so, so I'll go Star Trek because the spaceships are nicer. How does it prepare me? Um, let, let me say this. Um, I think that you, you, you'll, all, you'll be sat there now in your classroom or at home and you'll be thinking, what do I do? What do I do with my life? You know, um, and, and maybe, probably I would say all of you will be interested in loads of things. You'll be interested in music and art and you like reading books and you like watching movies, but you like doing science as well and looking at nature. You might like exploring whatever it is that you like doing. There won't be just one of those things that you're interested in and there shouldn't be either. You should, if you're, you, you should follow the things that you're interested in. I don't want to give you the advice, like, don't listen to anyone, right? <laughs> you should listen to your teachers and your parents. And they, but ultimately, 
you, the thing you'll enjoy most and be best at is the thing you're most interested in. And that might be two things or three things or four things or one thing. So my advice would be tr try them all and don't lose them. And, and actually, uh, I, and I really believe that this, we, we divide our knowledge, right? We divide being a human being up into little boxes. We say we're an artist or a scientist or a musician. And I think it's nonsense, actually. I think, I think that being a human being is being someone who is curious about stuff, right? And it, you might be curious about music or you might be curious about history or you might be curious about the universe and biology. Uh, and I, I think really they're all the same thing. <laughs> so so I, that's my real answer. I, I was interested in music and I still am. And I was interested in science when I was growing up and I still am. And I'm interested in other stuff as well. I get asked this quite a lot. What would happen if you put your hand in the Large Hadron Collider or bacon or whatever it is? The thing is, you can't because the 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 first of all, the Large Hadron Collider is an enormous vacuum tube. It has to be. You think about what it's doing. It's twenty-seven kilometers in circumference, and we're sending these protons around at very close to the speed of light. 99.999999% of the speed of light. They go around eleven thousand times a second around this ring. So if there's any, anything in there at all, that you, you completely lose control of these beautifully tuned beams of particles. So it's got to be this be perfect vacuum. So you can't run it if you put anything in it. <laughs> it just doesn't work. So you can't do that. So, so the answer is you, you can't do it. Um, what would happen if you did, the, the beams would would just go, they, they just scatter, the, they'd hit things and it, I, you know, it, 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 it wouldn't work. <laughs> so that's the answer. The thing that captured my imagination was astronomy. So I, it, astronomy is a very beautiful science. It's, I, I think it's like, it's like biology or natural history in the sense that it's one of those things you can go and look it, with nothing. You, you could go look for you know, ants in the garden and watch how they behave with nothing. You can look at the stars with nothing at all. So it's just something you can do. And it was the stars that captured my imagination. Um, but what I found is, is as I went, sort of did more and more science and learned more at school and went to university, is that um, there are so many things that we don't know about nature. Just the, and the most profound things, really, uh, we don't know. So if you think about it, if you want to be uh, an explorer, which is what scientists are, and go out into the world and try to find out new things, the, the most inspiring thing for me is there are just, <laughs> it feels like there are an infinite number of things that we don't know. Um, I think Carl Sagan, who was one of my great inspirations when I was growing up, said that, uh somewhere somewhere he said somewhere out there something wonderful is waiting to be known and that's really what science is <laughs>